ओके सो हाय एवरीवन वेरी वार गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन ऑफ हंटिंग फॉर सूजी वी हैव टू टॉक्स इन द फर्स्ट सेशन सो वी विल स्टार्ट विथ विप्लो and uh, title of his talk will be hicks as a tool for suzy searches at the high doom university lhc so i will give you a warning 5 uh, minutes before uh, 30 minutes okay uh, so okay we can you can start okay thank you rahul okay so let me start yeah so i would like to thank the organizers uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk about heavy hicks so today i'll be talking about heavy hicks in the context of mssm okay so oh, what's going on uh, just a minute i think your slides are not changing change actually um what's going on it's strange now we can see yes no can you can you go to not full excuse me probably i should use like you, light show or something yes light show no it's not showing yeah yeah so okay so uh this is the current situation that we have found a higgs boson with mass 125 gv and uh, i think properties are very consistent with the standard model expectation but i think we Will require more uh, consistency checks. Okay, so today, uh, the, like there are many questions related to the Higgs boson. What's the total decay weight and like spin parity, differential distributions, all these things. But in my talk, I'll actually take three such points. What's the first one is the coupling of the observed Higgs bosons, and whether there are new decay modes of the observed Higgs bosons, and the presence of additional higgs bosons in the context of mssm okay so this is the branching plot for standard model higgs boson as a function of higgs mass so if you see that uh, this 125 gv this is a, there is a vertical line in the plot you see that uh, this uh, for 125 gv higgs boson bb bar is the most dominant uh, decay mode branching is around 57% although the like bb bar higgs bb bar yukawa coupling is very small it's mb by v so so this means that the total decay weight is really small and because of this reason loop uh, like loop processes or like had like three body or four body decay modes the branching are actually they have become sizable they are not non negligible so this gives us unique opportunity for several measurements okay so in experiment uh, like if you see cms or atlas papers you will see something called signal strength which is the so it's a ratio so in the numerator it's the number say cross section into branching what is observed in experiment divided by what is expected from the standard model okay so you understand that and you can actually define such uh, signal strength variables for depending on production and decay mode so there are many such variables so the expectation for standard model higgs boson is that this mu are of the order of 1 for all the channels because it's the same thing right the observed and expected will be the same so expectation is mu of the order of 1 and actually we have observed that the mu are consistent with the standard model expectations so lhc results already rule out high mu values like say suppose you measure some signal strength this mu cannot be 10 okay this type of things are ruled out okay but small deviations are still allowed now the question is what do we expect in mssm so what's the expectation suppose we measure the branching or mu values what do we expect from mssm so i'll give you some 
like some three uh, possibilities. Uh, this is some kind of hypothetical situation. I have not used any experimental data. So let's consider these three possibilities. So one, just see this uh, ZZ signal strength in GGF channel production mode. So here it's greater than one. The second possibility, it's 0.9. It's less than, slightly less than one. And the third one is 0.99, which is consistent with one. The question is, can you get these three possibilities in MSSM? Or if we see, say, if we consider example one, it's like higher than the expectation. Can you rule out supersymmetry or not? Okay, so this is the question. Okay, so we already, we have seen this thing, I think in Deptos talk that uh, we have like two Higgs doublets in MSSM and you can define the mixing angle between this, the neutral components of H10 and H20. So alpha is the mixing angle. And these are physical, like CP even Higgs bosons are small h and capital H. And at the tree level, you can, have only two parameters, ma and tan beta. So this means that the mixing angle can be written in terms of ma and tan beta at the tree level. Okay, and if you see the tree level couplings, so here assume that the small h is the standard model Higgs boson. And you can write down the couplings in terms of alpha and beta. So consider this situation, if beta minus alpha is close to pi by two, then like coupling of the Higgs boson, 125 GV Higgs boson, 2 BB bar, TT bar, or gauge bosons are identical to the standard model. Okay. So in this situation, you can easily satisfy, you can easily get this example three, where all the like signal strengths are consistent with one. And you can actually get such, you can achieve this condition if the pseudo scalars are reasonably heavy, a few hundred GeV, or you can also have some like delicate situation where beta minus alpha is like, is close to pi by two, but pseudo scalar that MA is not very heavy. Okay, so this condition that example three can be satisfied easily. It's like very similar to standard model and Suzy is say slightly like it's decoupled and like heavy scalars are sitting in around 500, 600 GeV at least, something like that. Okay, so consider the second situation where this signal strength is slightly reduced, but you understand that the coupling is proportional to sine beta minus alpha. So it's actually less than one, right? It, you can have such situation where sine beta minus alpha can be less than one and in the signal strength, it's square of sine, sine squared beta minus alpha. So you can also have this possibility too. Okay, but the first option, that question is, how can you get signal strength, say mu ZZ greater than one? Because in the coupling, we have sine beta minus alpha so it is always like sine square beta minus alpha is always less than one. So the question is, if you observe like mu GGF ZZ, say 1.5, can you rule out Suzy or not? So the answer is actually more complicated like than the standard two Higgs doublet models. The problem is that the Higgs to BB bar coupling can be modified in the presence of Suzy particles. So it's like, there are particles like glue nose bottoms, et cetera, that can enhance or suppress the Higgs to be effective Higgs to be bar coupling. And the effect is actually, it can be like high. So in principle, Higgs to BB bar partial width can be reduced in MSSM. And if you reduce the partial decay width, which is the in BB bar, which is the dominant mode. So you can in principle increase the branching ratios or the signal strength variables. Okay, so this is also a possibility. So I have just given these three examples is that because these loop effects are really important, 
it's not just the cup, three level couplings. There are more effects because of the other presence of other particles. And if you consider some like rare processes like X to gamma gamma. So in that case, it's a loop process in the like standard model. So you can also have like some contribution, some loop from star, star loop and charge in a loops. And you can also have contribution from charge X contribution. Uh, like which is negligible and in the Higgs to glue glue which is the decay mode or the production glue on glue on to Higgs the, 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 the like top triangle instead of top triangle you can also have stop so that can also modify the production overall production processes in the glue on fusion okay so let me tell you like the question here I am just uh, showing one plot here we have applied it's a slightly updated sorry outdated result so here we have applied some run one and run two or combined signal strength numbers on the on the uh, like the 10 beta ma plane so this orange points are actually allowed and it means that so if you apply this Higgs constraints signal strength constraints it's not very strong okay so you can probably rule out very low MA region but if MA is say around three four hundred GeV uh, is almost like a decoupling situation so you can actually have many points in the parameter space but the flavor physics constraints are more stringent than the Higgs signals constraint. So if you apply this B2 tau nu, B2 S gamma and BS2 mu plus mu minus, you can rule out some high tan beta region and some part of the low M8 and beta G region. So here the blue points are allowed if you consider Higgs signal strength as well as flavor physics constraints. Now the question is, so these are like all like indirect uh, bounds, but the question is uh, if you apply, so, but the, in MSSM, we also have like extra Higgs bosons, right? Like charge Higgs boson, a CP odd Higgs boson, and one CP even Higgs boson, apart from this observed Higgs boson, 125 GeV. Okay, so, so we can also search for those particles and so, and there are many actually searches available. You can see we have used like several uh, analyses from CMS and Atlas. But again, uh, I'll, it's not the most updated list. I'll come to that point. So, but I think the summary of this whole exercise is that there are actually two important points. So, like heavy Higgs can decay to. ZZ or WW. So there are many searches available, but like these blue points are allowed points and the limits are really weak. Okay. The reason is that if you see this table, you see that we are searching for heavy Higgs boson and the coupling to uh, coupling of the heavy Higgs to WW or ZZ is cos beta minus alpha. And I have already told you that if beta minus alpha is pi by two, this coupling is really suppressed. So that's why if you apply all this ZZ or WW uh, analysis, you won't be able to exclude almost any points in the allowed parameter space. Okay, so, but there is another, uh, there is the most important analysis here is associated production of heavy Higgs or pseudo-scalar Higgs with B jets because this coupling BBA coupling or BB heavy Higgs coupling in that limit is proportional to tan beta. So the cross section is proportional to tan square beta. So in that case, so this cross section is enhanced because it's proportional to tan square beta. So this analysis this has the potential to rule out high tan beta 
for like reasonable Higgs mass, like moderate, like uh, TV level Higgs mass, it, it can rule out. So here I can, I just want to show this blue points. Blue points are actually ruled out by CMS or Atlas 8 TV results. And we have applied 35 or 36 femto one inverse results by CMS or Atlas. So you see that this brown points are allowed and this uh, yellow points or this orange points are excluded by CMS or Atlas B associated Higgs production, which decays to tau tau analysis. So you see that probably anything, if you restrict heavy, heavy scalars below one TeV, so the only region which is allowed is around 10 beta less than 10. Okay. But okay, so this is actually another, this is the same thing. But if you see the beta minus alpha, you see that it's very close to pi by two. If you apply all these results, you'll see that it's very close to pi by two, which is, you can say it's a probably decoupling limit or you can say it's alignment limit. Okay. Now, uh, so, but I have already told you that these are not the most updated one. There are new searches available. In 2018, CMS and Atlas published these two papers, but here they have used, I think 36 fem to one inverse of data. This is the same analysis, heavy X production and that decays to tau tau. So these two analysis, if you consider the, like the upper limit, they're consistent. But very recently, Atlas uh, published their uh, anal result using 139 femto one inverse of data. Okay, so if you see this result, you will see some kind of huge improvements because if you see this maroon line, that was Atlas 36 femto one inverse result. And now this black line is the current bound. So you see that it's a like four or five factor of four or five uh, reduction in the upper limit. So it's some kind of huge improvement and it cannot come from the like luminosity only. Okay, because uh, yeah, they have used 139 instead of 36 femto bound inverse, that's for sure. But the most important thing is that according to the paper that they have actually they understand top quark background, which is some kind of dominant decay like background, standard model background. They, they have a better modeling of the top quark background. So, and that's how they improve the result. And I didn't find the CMS analysis in this channel. So I think it will be public very soon. So then we can actually see the like comparison. But the point is that it's very interesting that if you, if you see the paper that, uh, they have translated this bound in the M8 and beta plane. And they also have some like 2018 paper where they actually talked about projection. It's like it's a projection of RAN2 data, assuming as for it's a projection for 3000 femto one inverse of data, like high luminosity LHC, the same channel. And you compare these two limits. So you will see that uh, the current limits are like almost comparable, already comparable to the future projection in the TEP mass region. Okay, but if you see the like high mass region, say two TEP or something, then you will see that uh, probably high luminosity LHC will gain something here, at the very high mass region because there the background is really small, so it's just statistics. So you have to collect more data and you will actually gain sensitivity in the high mass region. But in the low mass region, the limit is almost like, almost like saturated. So probably, I don't know whether they will be able to improve it, but the point is that in the TV range, it's a, the future limit is very similar to the current limit, but I think you can do more optimization and probably you can get a better limit. Okay, so, but uh, I think you, you should be careful about the, like uh, 
the caption because they have the question is whether we can compare these two things or not like here they have written one mh 125 scenario and it's hmssm so it like you will also find such thing in the uh, like interpretation plots again it's mh 125 gv alignment and it's a uh, hmssm so it depends on your assumption and you will get you can get slightly different limits based on your assumptions so if you want to see some more updates you can or benchmarks you i have given some references you can see these things okay so i will know you have 5 minutes okay okay i see okay so okay so the maybe i'll just okay so okay the point is that so far we have actually uh, talked about limits or something current limits but the limits are actually derived assuming 100% decay to standard model particles. But in SUSY, like other particles can be lighter than heavy Higgs bosons and uh, heavy Higgs can decay to many other particles, SUSY particles. And uh, actually uh, this type of decay modes like, uh, like heavy Higgs can decay to electroweak nodes. And these decay modes are actually interesting at the low tan beta region, which is not excluded so far. So these branchings can be like very high in some cases, 50, 60, 70%. And that can actually, if you apply, if you assume these things, you will get lower bounds. Like it, the limits are not that stringent. So, and actually we have done this analysis and you actually we have found that, so like uh, you can use some, dark matter analysis like mono Z plus MET, which is generally used for dark matter searches. You can use the, those uh, results to constrain such scenarios, but you need more optimizations because here the missing it is not that much. So probably you have to uh, like uh, think of more dedicated searches. And actually in principle, heavy Higgs can, heavy Higgs can also decay to many other particles like stop, stars, bottom. So they're like, such works in this direction. Okay, maybe I'll skip this one. Okay, so I think let's talk about the future projection. So, so we have done some projection studies for HLLHC and we have considered several like more than 10 channels, like uh, the, the heavy Higgs can decay to 125 GV Higgs boson, pseudoscalar can decay to ZH, heavy X or pseudoscalar can decay to TT bar and uh, as usual B associated production. So what we have found is that in the low tan beta region, and if the Higgs mass is not, heavy Higgs is probably below 400, 500 GeV, heavy Higgs to H8 channel can rule out this region. And if the Higgs mass is say above top threshold, in the low tan beta, this branching is also sizable and you can have some sensitivity in this region. And, but there uh, we believe that there will be some small region even below one TV and like tan beta five, six or something that won't be uh, like the future analysis may not be able to cover this region. And these orange points are actually BB bar H analysis that decays to tau tau. But anyway, so the again, if you allow some more decay, like non-standard decay modes, the limit can be weaker in this region. Like if you allow like uh, particles like heavy X decays to electroweak, you know, so the limit can be weaker. So, okay, there is one point I on cover that heavy X, like the MSSM can also affect the die Higgs productions. There are additional decay modes and modification in the couplings. So, but uh, I won't be able to cover this, but, but I have given some references here. So the last point is the heavy X production at HELHC. So you understand that, uh, okay, so the, the, the future, so if you think about 125 GV Higgs boson in the GGF channel, you can expect now 150, or in the di Higgs channel, you can have like gain in 400 if you consider this 100 TV collider with uh, 20, 30 
so i think it's a 30000 uh, femto one inverse not 30 and the cross section will also increase so actually there is a projection it's a, some kind of old projection so they are actually this in this paper they actually just like uh, extrapolated the 8 tv results for lhc 100 tv results and they have said that okay probably you can go up to 2 tv or something if you consider 100 tv future collider but the problem is that it's just a projection of 8 tv so it's there is no optimization so there are more studies by these people but they have actually studied more channels and the limit or the projection is much better than the previous projection and you can actually have sensitivity in the like up to 5 or 10 tv depending on the decay modes like tt bar or four tops they have actually considered different decay modes but the point is that these are like uh, theoretical studies and uh, you really don't know because the, the the designs and like there will be many effects and detector resolutions we don't know much about this thing but it's some kind of fast studies in this direction so but i think the main point is that you can probably cover like multi tv heavy x bosons at 100 tv okay so that's my summary so the summary is that the mssm higgs bosons are not highly constant from the Higgs data itself, but the overall trend like shows the, like some kind of decoupled heavy Higgs sectors. Okay. And, but the heavy Higgs arches in association with B jets and that decays to tau tau puts very strong constant in the high as well as moderate and beta regions. The third point is interesting that the heavy Higgs boson limits can be weakened uh, if you allow like additional decay modes like electroequinos or stops or staus so you need more dedicated analysis in this direction and the fourth point is that it's like the preliminary studies actually show that probably hlhc will not be able to rule out like the, all the points the heavy X uh, parameter space below one TV. There will be like in the low 10 meter region, you will have something that's the uh, expectation. I don't know, but, but we should actually concentrate in this region and try to optimize and whether we can cover this region or not. And 100 TV collider will be sensitive to multi TV heavy X bosons of MSSM. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Viplo. So, are there any questions? So, I have one in the chat from Alpna. So, her maybe I will read out the question. Her question is how the extrapolated results for 100 TV collider will change if we also consider high luminosity, like 3000 femtobahn or 300 femtobahn inverse. Okay. So, just a minute. Yeah, so here you see um, yeah. probably this plot is better. Yeah, so you see those lines. It's so here they have considered different luminosities like 30, 30,000, 3,000 to one inverse for 14 TV and 100 TV. So you see, take one line, say, say this line, you probably can see the cursor, right? So if the limit is around two TV, that can go up to five TV. So that's, uh, in some cases, it will actually improve because if you have very heavy, in the heavy mass region, probably if you increase the luminosity, you will gain more compared to the low mass regions. Okay. Any other questions? Shahul, I have one. This is Sima here. Mm -hmm. Shall I? 
Yeah. Yes. So I just want to ask Vipra one question is that like, is there any upper bound also on the MA from the theory side or any masses allowed? I mean, in terms uh, of breaking any upper bound on, okay, heavy Higgs, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you understand the concern I am having here, right? Uh, yeah, actually, I won't, I'll say no, actually, mm -hmm. because maybe it, it depends on the like Susie scale, right? So, Probably multi TV is still fine. Like, I don't know whether you can like take um, like ten to the power eight TV particles. Uh, in that case, I think. Uh, but I I'll say that the multi TV heavy X is still fine because in that case I don't know the 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 decay width will be really high and I don't know that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Particles or not? Yeah. So, but I think okay. multi TV is still fine actually. I mean, even 20 TV for particles look a bit too high, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, can there be like more implications one we should start worrying about and try to constrain it on theory side also? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it depends on like uh, the parameter space and probably you can still consider a multi TV. Like it's still fine. That's my guess. But uh, yeah. uh, can I say yeah. something? Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, this is the yeah. So I think there is um, to uh, answer Seema's questions. There is no limit. I what Biplob is saying is uh, exactly. I'm repeating it because imagine split supersymmetry. You can take all the scalars. You can take them all the way up to the intermediate scale. Okay. The only constraint is gauge coupling unification, and um, that is very limited uh, thing. And uh, Yes, meaning other than the collateral implications, so you also have implications for uh, things like EDMs and everything. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the only thing you can see, I don't think you may be able to see at 100 TV collateral, but the only limit you'll have is from EDMs if you have CP violation. Okay. Yeah, that can prove actually like very high uh, yeah. mass regions. Like, but yeah, direct searches are like. Uh, you can go up to like five or 10 TV at most. So even for hundred TV. Theoretically, there is no concern as such. It, I mean, yeah. There's no constraint. Yeah, so like it depends on the Susie scale, like breaking scale and all these things. Like he gave this example of split Susie. Okay, so maybe one last question if someone has. Okay, so actually I had one question. So Viplo, mm -hmm. you focused on H and A in these uh, direct mm -hmm. searches, right? Mm -hmm. What about the constraints coming from H plus, the charge killer? Yeah, yeah. So actually charge Higgs, uh, okay, that's true. So I didn't actually talk about charge Higgs. So actually in principle, charge Higgs can also put constraints. So you just see this uh, plot, charge Higgs can rule out I think the low tan beta region as well as high tan beta region, depending on the tan beta. So I can show you one plot. I think it's there. Just a minute. Yeah. So this is the Atlas like result on charge X. Like you produce charge X in association with the TB bar and that decays to TB bar. So you can rule out some low, depending on the model, you can rule out the low tan beta as well as high tan beta regions. Yeah, so actually I was wondering that the low tan beta region that you said is allowed, mm -hmm. won't mm -hmm. it get ruled out by uh, H plus constraints? Because yeah. within so, a model, they all come true. together, right? Yes, yes, that's true. But so the point is Is there that, a left over tan beta in low uh, region? Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, so you have to actually calculate the charge Higgs limits, but I think the charge in most of the cases, charge limit, uh, limits are actually in a very low tan beta, like tan beta two or three. And if you see those points here, um, again, it depends on the SUSY scale. Okay. Uh, because I think the very low tan beta, if you want to get, um, if you want to satisfy Higgs mass, around that region, you have to assume very high Susie scale. Mm -hmm. So in, in most of the like analysis, it starts around three or four, 10 beta. So like charge X limits may be here, 
very like it can rule out very low tan beta regions and i think you are correct that one should study the charge higgs limits for future analysis and check whether it can rule out the entire region or not but i think it's probably uh, difficult that's my guess actually just one final point so mm -hmm. what i was wondering is that because of the precision constant stu constants yes so you cannot have charge higgs too much uh, you know away from h and a right yes that's and true. so if charge higgs direct constants are there which are much stronger then including stu on top of it won't it rule uh -huh. out that's what my question was won't it okay. rule out okay. the low mass ranges okay okay so my guess is that this charge higgs constants will be similar to this heavy higgs to hh and tt bar constants that we have already considered okay so Okay. but yeah so but the point is that uh, you can gain some sensitivity in the heavy x to tt bar also because uh, then if you want to do it uh, correctly you have to use the interference effect and uh, you have to search for like peak dip structures and probably you can improve something here but uh, yeah you are correct that one should study the charge x part and check whether it can be as sensitive as these two channels i agree with you thanks you so we actually unfortunately are out of time so kamila has one question but kamila maybe Hello. you can ask uh, diplo uh, personally because we have to move on so thanks diplo again for a very nice talk and uh, thank you